Welcome to my 2018 film retrospective. Honorable mention yet again, super long. At this point, it's pretty much because I started seeing a lot more movies. This year, I had a movie pass, and so I was able to see a lot more movies, and so that really jacked up my movie viewing, so the list is probably a lot longer than it would have been otherwise. Favorite bad movie would be Hurricane Heist. This movie was a movie I went in knowing that it was gonna be bad and was really hoping that it would be this kind of movie and it absolutely delivers. You know, coming from a director who'd worked in Hollywood for quite a while, you know, he made Fast and Furious at the very least and, you know, it's it's always weird to see someone that starts off with something that was that big because, you know, Fast and Furious launched this gigantic franchise and he's doing something like this that is so much more, you know, B-list. But I love it nonetheless. Actually, a surprisingly well-made movie. I like, there's some, there's some practical effects, some, some practical stunts. Um, a lot of a lot of stuff that feels kind of real there. It obviously is some goofy CGI in it as well. But that's what makes the movie what it is. The acting, awful. Almost everyone in this movie is not American, but they're all British or English or Australian or some sort of person that did not grow up in America trying to do American accent. Some are fine. Other ones are blatantly obvious. It kind of adds the goofiness and weird otherworldly element of this movie that it does not feel like it takes place in the real world, and but it wants to be. And I don't know what they were going for in this movie, but I enjoy it nonetheless. There is some like actual good action in it, but most of the action is kind of so over the top and ridiculous. I really enjoyed it. And it, if you like dumb heist movies, if you like kind of the dumbness of the Fast and Furious movies, um, if you just like a movie that it, maybe it knows what it is, maybe it doesn't, but it's just kind of goofy and fun to watch, easy to make fun of, definitely check it out. My overlooked recommendation for this movie is almost the exact opposite with Leave No Trace. This is the one of the most somber, down-to-earth, realistic, touching, heartfelt movies I have ever seen. And it doesn't exactly land on my honorable mention list just because it's not a movie I'd want to rewatch over and over again. It doesn't quite leave the lasting impression that a great honorable mention movie would. But nonetheless, it's a movie that, that no one talks about. And I thought like, well, personally, it's not a super favorite movie of mine, but I think it's really excellent. I think other people would certain people would really connect with this movie and there's a lot to like about it. The two lead performances are absolutely incredible. Ben Foster has been a favorite of mine ever since I was younger and I've loved, or well, kind of hated to see that he hasn't really exploded yet but he's gotten better and better roles as time has gone on and love to see that. And it's just it's such a simple movie about a father and uh, daughter just kind of trying to make their way in the world and they, they really only have each other but they've kind of chosen to only have each other and they won't open up to the rest of the world. It's, you know, there's no right or wrong answer here. It's just kind of trying to figure out what life looks like for them. And it's it's a heartbreaking movie, but it's also very heartfeltness. There's scenes of happiness, scenes of sadness. And, um, you know, I saw this movie, then the next day I had a flight and I wrote my review on the plane. I had a lot of time to think about it and I think that everyone should check this movie out. My favorite movie of 2018, 100% The Isle of Dogs. I saw this movie in theaters and came out of the movies thinking that movie's a perfect 10 and 10 in my book. The rest of the year, this movie came out like March or April, or at least that's when I saw it. Rest of the year, everything's gonna have to stack up to this. Nothing that came out the rest of the year ever quite surpassed how much I enjoyed Isle of Dogs. Both enjoyed it and thought that it's an incredible film. First off, stop motion. Nothing like this has ever quite been accomplished. The Leica films are really incredible, but I don't think they did a bunch of characters with hair moving in the wind like this movie does and Laika Films absolutely love them. We'll talk about one for 2019, but Isle of Dogs both also has an incredible story, incredible performances, so funny, so touching. Um, it's just ambiguous enough I think anyone can kind of take away what they want out of it, but it's also got enough going on that it clearly has something to say and think that just about anyone can enjoy this movie. It is a surprisingly kind of dour and kind of aggressive at times. I think there's some, some stuff that would kind of shock some people, but it is stop motion, so it's not real. I think some people might be off put because it's bad things happening to dogs, but I think that makes it way more emotionally impactful. Um, every single character is super interesting. I laugh at this movie every time I think about it, every time I watch it, and it's just, for me, the epitome of filmmaking because they took the difficulty of animation where you have to create everything you see and the difficulty of filmmaking that you have to deal with real uh, you know objects that exist with real lighting and real physics and that it's an insane person task they pulled it off so well there are some people that are against this movie and I can kind of understand why there's some kind of problematic elements to it but I couldn't care less because everything that's good about this movie the story the heartfeltness to it the technique to it is just so solid and I could just 
talk to a blue in the mouth about this film. I love it so much. This is probably, and in, in when it all is said and done, it's probably going to be one of my top favorite films of all time, at least at this point. It'd be really hard to top. Nothing in 2019 is topped, I can tell you that much. But um, let's go ahead and talk about that. Let's go on to 2019. Perspective in film, I'm in the right spot. 